So the audience is filling up. So unfortunately, we don't have the chance to really say personally hello. We hope after, let's say, about in August, September, we come back to a situation where we really can meet physically. So some seconds to go. Oh, we have a guest joining us. Okay. 7.30. I wish you all a very warm welcome to our today's webinar. Today we are going to talk about the importance of free trade agreements for Switzerland, but also, of course, for Indonesia. And of course, in detail about, we talk about the Comprehensive Economic, economic Partnership, Partnership Agreement, agreement CEPA, CEPA, between the EFTA states and Indonesia. Indonesia. My name is uh, Marcus Spenziger. I'm the Director of Chamber of Commerce, St. Gallen Appenzell. We act as a voice for Eastern Switzerland enterprises and represent roughly 1,600 members. And I'm happy to host today's webinar. Before we dive into today's topic, I would like to highlight some, some organizational facts. <coughs> First, please mute your microphone when not speaking. That way we can avoid noise feedback. Second, the webinar will be recorded uh, in order to be watched on our website afterwards. So thank you very much for doing so. So let's start with some key figures. This slide shows you um, the unused potential for the Swiss economy for selected countries, with which Switzerland does not have a Markus, I'm sorry, I just muted you. I'm muting all participants. Please, um, everyone that has not muted until now, mute your microphone. Markus, sorry, unmute, please. Thank you, Jan. So, like, uh, okay. Okay. Um, okay, thank you very much. So, I'm back. Yeah. The unused potential of the Indonesian market is striking. And he comes along with high economic growth in, e in Indonesia. As today, Indonesia is the 16th largest economy worldwide. But PWC experts expect Indonesia to become the world, world's fourth biggest economy until 2050, right behind China, India, and the US. Therefore, especially the, the, the embarrassing uh, outlook of the growing growth of the growth of uh, Indonesia's um, economy is uh, astonishing. So you can clearly see that the motivation of Switzerland to conclude the free trade agreement with Indonesia, together with Liechtenstein, Norway, and Iceland the so-called EFTA states. Um, to go back in the short history of these uh, of SIPA negotiations st started in 2010 between the EFTA states and Indonesia. After 15 rounds of negotiations, the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement called SIPA was signed on December 16, 2018. By end of 2019, the Swiss legislative agreed on the SEPA. However, an alliance of left uh, links green organizations called for a so-called referendum. This is why we will vote about the free trade agreement on March 7th this year in Switzerland. Let's have a look on today's agenda. First, Dr. Jan Atteslander will talk about the role of free trade agreements for Switzerland and about why this specific agreement is of strategic importance for Switzerland as an export nation. 
Janatas Lerner is head of inter international relations, a member of the executive board at Economy Swiss. Afterwards, we hear from Jason about the business related and the economic relationship between Switzerland and Indonesia. Jesse is chairman of the Indonesia committee at the Swiss Asian Chamber of Commerce, as we heard this morning in the very beginning of the meeting, sitting in Basel. We are then very happy to welcome Professor Maliaman Haddad, Indonesia's ambassador to Switzerland and Liechtenstein. Very, very uh, we are very, very, very happy to have you here this morning. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Mr. Ambassador will shed some light on the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. In the final part, you then, of course, have the opportunity to ask question. We come to that later on. Therefore, uh, Jan Atteslander, please, the stage is yours. Good morning, everybody. Your Excellency and the Director Markus Benziger, thanks for the invitation. I just try to upload my slides now. Here we go. Why are free trade agreements important to Switzerland as an export nation? I see three main reasons. First, it has a very positive impact on trade both ways. And this is quite important for both countries. Uh, Switzerland is innovation based, but we need exports. And also Indonesia, as a result of the growth, will invest more and more in downstream industrial activity. So also for Indonesia, access to international markets is very important. The second reason is Free trade agreements are currently a very important instrument to protect the interests of export nations against protectionism. Because once you have concluded such an agreement, you cannot just raise import barriers and tariffs. You have to stay where you are or reopen negotiations. And the third reason is also quite important. The third reason is once governments have concluded bilateral investment and trade, trade agreements like here, they also have a privileged access to the partner's government once we have problems or issues. We found out that once you had an issue on the table, it's much easier to find solutions. Now I would like to quickly run through a couple of slides and then hand back the floor to Markus Benziger. Here, as already mentioned, um, uh, we can see that Indonesia has a huge potential. It is having many similarities to Switzerland. For example, our national flags have the same colors, but it's a bit bigger than Switzerland, about 46 times. The population with more than 260 million is a bit bigger. And also the growth rate is, is quite substantial. We still see some substantial trade barriers for Swiss exporters. And um, Indonesia is also going to develop into an important hub in Asia for parts of the world economy. Let's be frank and open. Indonesia will be at the heart of the fastest growing region in this world in the next 30 years. And many Swiss companies have already seen this. We have currently 150 Swiss companies active, creating more than 50,000 jobs. It's MEs, multinational enterprises, bigger ones, but also smaller ones that have uh, a foothold already in Indonesia and are reporting interesting markets and a great potential. I, I know that Jason, also the ambassador, will go through these things. Uh, so let me be um, here rather quick. We see that um, thanks to this comprehensive agreement, 98% of all import tariffs will be reduced or abolished. Currently, that's a, a saving of 25 million uh, Swiss francs per year. All the export sectors in Switzerland way will have a big um, advantage. That means chemical, pharmaceutical, but also machine, metal industry, watches and, and all the others. So 
everyone has a big advantage when it comes to exports. Then, very important, uh, Switzerland is an innovation-based economy, and many countries have difficulties following the WTO rules to protect intellectual property. And Indonesia agreed here to protect innovation and protect intellectual property like patents or trademarks, which is really welcome by our economy. We, we could not conclude a free trade agreement without this protection. This is also important for SMEs that are based on innovation. Then also facilitation for trade and services, um, then uh, better transparency and, and legal certainty for investment. Switzerland is a leading country among G10 when it comes to direct investment, you all know that. And we have also um, uh, liberal rules of origin that makes it li life easier than in, 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 in practical uh, um, aspects. And then of course, it's interesting strategically, um, if we conclude now, um, we will have a valuable advantage, a strategic advantage compared to our competitors from the EU, but also US companies because they have not yet the same level of market access we would have if we say yes on March 7. Now, why is SEPA uh, strategic for Switzerland? Um, we have already uh, talked about it. Um, it is strengthening the framework conditions economically in, in an era where protectionism is, is, is rising in all corners of this, of this planet. And um, so um, companies can plan ahead. They know they will not be disturbed by disruptive foreign economic policy, neither in Switzerland nor in Indonesia. Second one is a rather um, negative, but we have to mention it. Unfortunately, since 2001, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, is blocked. We have not concluded bigger rounds of liberalizations, which should be done, which have to be done sooner or later, but it is still blocked. So the only instrument we have to, to make life easier to have liberalized market access the only remaining instrument at the moment are bilateral free trade agreements. Then the, the next point is if we would have a no vote, not only Indonesia but also other countries would then ask themselves what it is it all about. You can't just sit at the table as mentioned already for years and then you say no to an agreement which is really well-balanced, uh, a fair agreement uh, with a good quality, so we would lose a lot of credibility, especially also in the area of sustainability. Here Indonesia agreed to a far-reaching chapter, and this is a landmark decision by Indonesia. Many other countries in that region look after this chapter. So if the Swiss population would say no, then, then um, Switzerland would have difficulties continue to promote on a credible level free trade agreements. Indonesia is not a small country politically and economically, so we cannot just start negotiations and then after seven or eight years of, of negotiations say, oh, we, we just leave it, uh, we don't want to have this agreement. Um, then, of course, um, we see here a need to have more sustainability in trade and with this agreement also um, the economy business can prove that trade helps more sustainability in the economies we trade with in the societies we trade with to have a positive impact on the social and also ecological level so that these trade agreements are not only about trade exports imports technology and, and, and investment, but they are also having a positive effect on sustainability. And we are convinced that once we would have say yes to such an agreement, other similar chapters in other agreements, not only in our Swiss ones, will follow. So this is also here quite an important signal to business and to our societies. So that's why a yes 
on March uh, 7 this year is of great importance for us all. So I would like to, to come to stop here to hand over uh, back the floor and I look forward to all your questions in a few moments. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jan, for this deep insight in, uh, um, in, in the advantages of uh, the free trade agreement. I think now we get, uh, I would like to hand over to Jesse, yes? yes. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Marcus uh, Bansinger, and, uh, and good morning, everybody in, uh, in Switzerland, and good afternoon for the one from Indonesia. Uh, uh, thank you, Marcus Basinger, and also uh, His Excellency. Uh, uh, I would like to welcome you all to my presentation here. Okay, let me work a bit here to put it on the to share the screen. Can you see my screen here? Perfect, Jesse. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. I'll in this opportunity I'll speak more about the B2B opportunity for the Swiss business to Indonesia. Uh, uh, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm an Indonesian. I've been living here in Switzerland for more than 16 years. And I named my company Bajak because I live in Basel. This is my base, but I'm from Jakarta originally. So it's Basel and Jakarta. So easy to remember. Okay, uh, COVID-19, yes, we live in a very weird situation and strange, uh, like everybody else in the world. And then um, for the first time in 20 years, Indonesia entered recession, but we hope the trend is um, is getting better for the last, uh, in, the, in the Q3, in the, 2020, the negative uh, impact is a bit lower. We hope it will come back to positive in 2021 or in the beginning of 2022. As Jan has mentioned before, trade is important to uh, to to boost the economic growth, and also we believe trade is the uh, tools to bring prosperity to people in the world, but in the last four years, let's say, started uh, by, by Trump administration, the trade war between China and USA, and certain countries start uh, putting the, the trade war policy. Uh, but we believe, Swiss and Indonesia believe in the free trade, and that's why that we have this uh, fta CPI agreement. And I, like in any other war, somebody may get the benefit of the war. Uh, what happened between China and Australia, actually Indonesia get the, the benefit, especially in the Cold deal. Uh, it shows that uh, we, Indonesia and China, has a good relationship uh, because China also has uh, invested uh, a lot also in our infrastructure. And China buy a lot of our commodities, soft commodity, hard commodities. So I think, for, for the Swiss as well, if they are doing business with Indonesia, they also have a special door also to China. This in the, in the slides. Okay. Now we are talking about EFTA and SIPA, but Indonesia is part of ASEAN. Inside Indonesia, Inside this region, we have this ASEAN, and then uh, we also have our own free trade agreement between the member countries. And then in last year, November or December, if I'm not mistaken, we have this uh, uh, RCEP agreement, uh, which is a, a bigger block of free trade of the countries. So actually, having an access to Indonesia you have access to ASEAN, and you also have access to RCEP, which is a, which consists of the 15 countries uh, led by China, and then we have also Japan and Australia and so on. This 
block represents the RCEP 15 uh, represent about 25 trillion dollars economy. This is huge. And and still this area is uh, the where the the economic growth is still the highest in the world. So this is a good opportunity for the Swiss um, business to get into this region through this uh, agreement that is uh, already in place by those countries. And uh, I will speak a bit about the Swiss uh, KMU here. Uh, this is the report from Credit Suisse. Uh, it seems that the Swiss activity for the KMU is uh, very, very much strong on the on the trading. And the second part is uh, very strong in the in the in the in the manufacturing. Here in the trading and then and then the, in the, the the manufacturing. And if we look into more detailed analysis, what we have been trading in, let's say in the in the 2019 years, Swiss import mostly textile. Uh, and then uh, the second biggest is the language shop, the agriculture product. And then what the Swiss export to Indonesia is uh, the biggest one is the, the, the chemical product and pharmaceutical. And the second part is uh, the machinery. And I forgot to mention actually in this category, we have uh, gold, the biggest one. But I think it's uh, very specific only affect this the bullion industry, mostly here in, in Switzerland. So we talk in general, this is the graph that is uh, provided by the economy, economy Swiss. So it's the, what is important for us, for Indonesia from the Swiss is uh, chemical and machineries. And then from the Switzerland, in, um, from Indonesia is textile and agriculture. I think looking at this composition, we, quite complementing in terms of the trade activities. And then I would like to also show that uh, according to SECO, this FTA SIPA agreement has a lot of benefit. And in fact, I would like to highlight a point here, kind of far food dishwasher land with shelf, which is which is okay for the, the, the agriculture industry in in Switzerland. Why it's is it's really complementing. We are not competing here in this area. This is what we also produce in Indonesia, the exotic fruits. And then we experience uh, COVID-19 and then we had the impact in them, let's say in the supply chain, in the logistic, because uh, the flights is stopped and so on. And then I believe we have learned from our lesson, if there's a pandemic, let's say in South America, People learn their lesson, they will just stop the flights, which also will impact your, your fruit supplies. So for the fruit buyers, you can also consider Indonesia as your diversification strategy. And then I can tell you that the Indonesian banana is also tastes excellent. I really like it there. And also, I'll speak a bit about dairy products. Indonesia has the highest growth of uh, dairy consumption uh, in many ways because we and also the change of lifestyle. We drink more coffee, more and more with the coffee with latte, cappuccino, and so on. And then this is the report taken from the USDA, uh, US Department of Agriculture. Uh, U.S. now command the market share in Indonesia like uh, 25 percent market share, and uh, Indonesia has imported one for 1.4 billion dairy import in 2019. This is a huge, considered as a big market, in my view, and I know a lot of uh, local businessmen in Indonesia uh, asking me if. I can get a Swiss interest to invest into Indonesia. 
this is a Swiss cow, the picture in a Swiss mountain in Lucerne, to cheese. Because we really need this product. We, we consume milk a lot. And uh, so anybody in Switzerland, if you have any interest to get into the mar this market, you please let me know because uh, I can help you to get in touch with the uh, real business in Indonesia, in Indonesia to develop this opportunity together. And especially Swiss has this uh, perception, your milk is probably the best in the world. So uh, please do let me know. And this is a good opportunity as well for the dairy farmers in Indonesia to invest or to run some 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 farming with your know-how, with your you know the sustainable the matter or the bio Swiss. It is a very good branding for the Swiss farmer as well in Indonesia. Okay, we have speak. We have spoken a bit about the the soft commodities, the fruits and the milk, and let me put in the bigger picture of the, the opportunity for the Swiss business here. We have, um, as before, we have soft commodities, uh, plantation, farm forestry, which I just uh, mentioned. We also have uh, hard commodities. This is uh, the, the right side is for the trading opportunity for you guys. And we have also the finished manufactured product, okay? Uh, but I will speak a bit about the the mining, the hard commodities. Maybe it's a bit uh, it's a bit more complicated to enter, and especially now we want to increase the value added the, from the Indonesian government perspective. We want to increase the value added in Indonesia territory. So they force they force the the so called the the primary business to invest in the in the secondary uh, process uh, in, in the value chain. For example, we, the Indonesian government blocked the nickel export. And now it become like a subject of dispute by the EU because they need the nickel. And Indonesia want to keep it in Indonesia to process for the battery mostly. But this is the trend that I've seen uh, that is being enforced by the Indonesian government, which I believe this is the correct strategy for them because manufacturing is very important in providing job opportunity. And then it will also go to this the, the left side part uh, that is uh, under Jokowi's, uh, President Jokowi's administration. We, we do a lot of uh, uh, reformation to attract more business into this manufacturing. That is the second most important here in Switzerland. So instead of only exporting, which is also like you know, the low hanging fruit for the Swiss business, the Swiss manufacturer can see Indonesia as the market to, as a production center and also as a hub to the region, as I also have shown in the, the ASEAN and the, 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 SEP, the SEPA agreement there. This is, uh, I'll speak briefly about this. Uh, if you look at the left side, this is how we categorize our, our, our business, the small, medium, and large. And then on the right side here, we have the category low tech, medium, and high tech. And here is the composition of the firm. As you can see briefly here, the high tech area, we are very, very underinvested. So this is also an opportunity for the Swiss business to, to look into this uh, segment and make Indonesia as the production hub uh, for this region. Th thank you, Jesse. Yeah. Thank you very much. Could you please slightly come to, to uh, the final yeah. messages okay. because we would, I would like to hand over to uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is our I'll, I'll skip. This is only the the our FDI to Indonesia, and I would like to tell you that the last two point here, Indonesia is very aggressive to to get investment. We have in omnibus law, and also we have this investment protection for the Swiss business to invest in Indonesia. And then uh, this is uh, for you to to read. If you have more questions, you can ask me where to invest in manufacturing in Indonesia. 
And then I will tell you also a bit about tourism. Tourism is the next thing that we want the Indonesian government want to develop. And please uh, take your time to read this report that is also sponsored by the Swiss uh, government in doing the research. And from this research, uh, we have also the uh, a lot of gaps that the Swiss entity with experience in tourism can help in this sector. Okay, that's that's my presentation here, just to show you many opportunities for the Swiss business to get into Indonesia. And you if you have any questions, I think that's all. I will conclude my my presentation. But Thank you very much, Jesse. We come back uh, uh, in the end uh, with uh, potential questions. Uh, thank you very much. So now I would ha like to hand over to Mr. Ambassador. Um, he will highlight, let's say, even really the uh, uh, this. Mr. Ambassador, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Marcos. Uh, uh, very good morning to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. It is really a privilege for me to be in this very important gathering. Uh, and on behalf of the Embassy of Indonesia here in Switzerland, I would like to thank the organizing committee for having me. And it is really very important because we are approaching the March uh, 7, 2020. As uh, Jan, Dr. Jan mentioned earlier, it is very important time to decide. You know, so this is, uh, again, I'm very grateful. Let me start with this very beautiful picture the uh, former uh, federal councillor Snyder Amman signing the agreement in 2018 as already mentioned earlier uh, together with our ministers the minister from Liechtenstein from Norway and from the Iceland so this is very important picture next please I just would like to uh, reiterate the commitment of Indonesian government. Our president mentioned very clearly that trade agreements could boost our export and investment. These two are key in our economic policy and development. So this is very important statement. Indonesia would like to be more open even in the future and invite all investment coming in to Indonesia uh, to absorb, realize the potential of our economy uh, in just in the middle of the very dynamic region in ASEAN and East Asia. Next, please. Next. Yes, this is, well, this is just to compare between Indonesia and Europe, you know, because when, for those who are already in Indonesia, you know exactly. 17,000 island, six hour flight from one point to the end for the other point, uh, from London to the Afghanistan or to the Turkey, you know, I mean, it's huge. Indonesia is huge. As uh, earlier mentioned by Dr. Yan, the economy is one trillion economy. Indonesia is member of G20. I think it is very much, uh, a uh, huge economy with all indicators already mentioned earlier with a great potential. Next, please. Well, let me start uh, talking about the journey of the agreement between Indonesia and EFTA. The negotiations were finally declared substantially completed by the negotiators through joint announcement in the meeting in Bali, then Pasar from, in, from October 29 to November 2018. So it took more than eight years to finalize all these things. So it's, both sides are very serious and committed. So discussion, negotiation is, was tough. That's why then it, it, it took almost nine years. I would like to underline Two important, uh, uh, two important things in this agreement. This is agreement is not only with Switzerland. It is with member of EFTA, uh, which is earlier mentioned. Uh, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, uh, Iceland, and uh, Norway. 
and Norway and Iceland already ratified this agreement. So among the member of the EFTA, Norway and Iceland is already ratified. Switzerland and Liechtenstein, well, as we all know, we are approaching the referendum on the 7th of March 2020. I will, I, I hope that we will have a good result. And then at the end, all the member of EFTA will ratify the agreement. And then the second point is, it is not only FTA, it is not only free trade agreement, it is comprehensive economic partnership. So it is very important. Uh, so it is beyond FTA, it is comprehensive economic partnership agreement. So this is very important. Uh, I just want to provide, give you some perspective uh, that there are a lot of opportunities beyond trade. Yeah, uh, that's why then it is important to mention about it is not only FTA, it is it is about comprehensive economic partnership agreement, economic partnership agreement. Next, please. This is the content of the agreement. Uh, you may see here, I just want to touch briefly each of the items uh, because it is comprehensive economic partnership. So they are consists of the, not only trade in goods, not only, I mean, not only provision on trade in goods, trade in services, but also talking about investment protection, talking about the intellectual property right, talking about the opportunity to join the government procurement, talking about how to um, ensure the competition, and then talking about the sustainable development. So this is very important because at the moment, we are talking about the sustainability issues, in particular related to the palm oil. The beauty of this agreement is basically bringing the topic of sustainability into the mainstream of discussion. So this is the beauty, you know, bringing something that before is something far away. Now we are talking together about the sustainability principle in all aspects of trade and investment. We are also talking about the capacity building and cooperation. We are talking about the institutional provision and also dispute settlement. If we have a dispute and then there are a clear mechanism how to settle the dispute uh, settlement. So again, I just would like to mention, we are talking not only trade and good and services, we are talking about a lot of things, including the capacity building, uh, relation, uh, protection, a settlement and institutional development. So this is a very comprehensive topic. I think this is very important because well, what I heard in the discussion, uh, as if we are talking just only about trade, you know, uh, free trade, about tariff reduction and, and so on and so forth. But actually it is beyond that uh, issues. We are talking more about very fundamental things that will benefit both sides. I mean, Indonesia and EFTA, including Switzerland. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, just briefly uh, provide you some uh, numbers here. So Indonesia will eliminate more than 8,000 tariff lines and Switzerland will eliminate more than 7,000 tariff line. Norway will eliminate more than 6,000 tariff line and Iceland will eliminate more than 8,000 tariff line. So it's very quite significant effort together that we negotiate more than eight years. You know. uh, there are also some, preferen some preferential tariff for Indonesia product and also preferential tariff for FTA product. Uh, palm oil, fishery product, gold, footwear, coffee, toys, textile, furniture, electrical appliance, machinery, bicycle, tire, and so on. From the EFTA side, gold, medicament, tanker, textile, watch, chemical, mackerel, machinery, juice, perfumes, and so on. So this is only some of the uh, big names uh, related to the uh, related to the preferential tariff 
that provided by the agreement. Next, please. The important things, particularly for Indonesia or also for the EPTA members is what next after the agreement? I think this is very important because the agreement itself is not the end of the journey. The agreement is just only a start uh, for benefiting from bigger uh, benefit for both sides, you know, because the objective is not the agreement or the signing. The objective is how we can develop further collaboration to enhance the welfare of our economy and our people. So that's why then there are some important steps that seems to me uh, take our attention. Uh, the first one is uh, what mission that we can do after the uh, ratification later on. In our view, uh, intensifying trade, tourism, and investment is very important. That's why then we will be arranged a lot of mission both sides from Indonesia, from Switzerland, in particular related to the intensifying trade tourism and investment. And then economic cooperation and capacity building program will be improved further later on after the ratification, because it seems to me, I just would like to uh, bring this uh, into bigger perspective that uh, this agreement is not only about palm oil. This agreement, it is much, much bigger than palm oil. Uh, and I think it is very important to recognize this because uh, this will benefit quite significantly for both sides, for Indonesia and Switzerland, as also mentioned earlier by Dr. Yan. The third step is about communicating the agreement to wider uh, stakeholders, socialization of the benefit and the opportunity of the agreement to our stakeholders, to our exporters, to our importers, you know, and also and other related uh, government uh, institution, including uh, supporting uh, uh, collaboration, not only B to B but also G to G and people to people as well. And last but not least, improving investment and business climate in Indonesia. That's our commitment in Indonesia, as earlier mentioned by Jesse that uh, government of Indonesia very much committed uh, because Indonesia, as I will tell you later on, uh, Indonesia is in the very central of the biodynamic regional economic cooperation and collaboration in Southeast Asian. Next, please. Uh, this is numbers. Uh, just to give you some insight, you know, how far the trade between Indonesia and EFTA. I just would like to say things about this briefly. I think this is, this is uh, mentioning here a little bit that the importance of footwear, uh, footwear for Indonesia because a lot of export of footwear of Indonesia to EFTA members countries. Next, please. Uh, just also to give you, provide some sense of uh, bigger perspective, uh, Indonesian global trade in 2019, our total trade 600, uh, sorry, 368 a billion US dollar mostly uh, goes to East Asia, including Japan, Korea, and China. And then after that, going to ASEAN, 23.9%, going to Australia, 2.3%, going to European Union, 8.5%, going to North America, 8.8%, and Latin America, 2.1%, and going to EFTA, just only 0.5%, less than 1%. 1 I think the room for growth is very significant. That's why then we hope that after the signing and after the ratification, the growth potential will be realized. I think 0.5% is very minimal and very small. That's why then with this agreement, we expect that even 
bigger collab economic collaboration between Indonesia and EFTA in the future. Next, please. Uh, JC already mentioned about this earlier. I just would like to say briefly that Indonesia and ASEAN is part of the global economic dynamics. A lot of FTA that's already we signed with China, Japan, Korea, Pakistan, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, and also 10 ASEAN member country, uh, Australia, and uh, New Zealand I already mentioned, and also the importance of the signing agreement under the RCEP, you know, regional partnership uh, that mentioned earlier by, by uh, Jesse that uh, 15 members country representing one third of the global uh, GDP, you know, so this is the biggest, the biggest agreement as far as the trade concern. So I just write, I just want, would like to mention that if you can open uh, agreement with Indonesia, then you very much welcome open also to other uh, countries under under the regional uh, agreement that Indonesia involved in. So this is very important opportunity. You come to Indonesia and then you you will be open to the more even bigger bigger market in very dynamic uh, regional uh, economy area. Next, please. Well, I think uh, Jesse already mentioned about this. This is about the RCEP that just signed last November. It's very recent. That's why this is very important. You see, this is starting from New Zealand up to the China. This is biggest, biggest economic collaboration just recently uh, signed by all by our president, by all the 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 the, the, the president or the the chief of the uh, respective countries. Next, please. I just want to mention a little bit because this is very important topic that being discussed uh, in Switzerland regarding the campaign by the NGO, you know, about the sustainability, how the Indonesian commitment to the sustainability issues. Well, I just want to say one more time that uh, sustainability now is part of our objective. Uh, we are very much committed and also a lot of uh, items and agenda in particular related to the implementation of uh, sustainable development goals under the UN. Uh, this SDG objective uh, cascaded already into uh, our national plan, in not only on the uh, uh, global warming issues, but also uh, creating an inclusive economic growth, uh, opening access to education, sustaining climate action and managing disaster and other innovative development financing. So this is very much uh, related to the effort in uh, reaching uh, the objective of the improvement of the welfare of the people of Indonesia. So again, I just would like to say that sustainability is very much in the core of the Indonesian policy not only on trade, but also on investment, uh, inbound and ex ex -bound, outbound investment. Next, please. Uh, the other issue that's already discussed very recently, in particular related to the sustainability, related to the issue on the, the deforestation in Indonesia. Uh, well, I just want to say something very important here that as far as the deforestation related to the palm oil ex the palm oil our government is already uh, do some kind of moratorium palm oil expansion no more palm oil expansion uh, assisted by also with the swiss government we have a program that we call it reducing deforestation and forest degradation we conduct restoration uh, not only forest but also pitland protecting high conservative value. Indonesia Sustainable Palm Oil, ISPO, uh, is very much uh, the target 
of our palm oil development. Everything should be sustainable and palm oil inten intensification and replanting, in particular involving small holders, uh, small holders of farmers in Indonesia. Uh, because as you may all aware that uh, more than 15 million people depend to this industry. Uh, this industry very much important in uh, reducing the poverty level of the people because involving the palm oil industry. Uh, that's why then again the, the beauty the, the beauty of the agreement is basically bringing a sustainability principle into the agreement. I think Swiss government is very tough on these sustainability issues and Indonesia also committed that when we export something not only on palm oil but also on cacao, on coffee, everything should be uh, under the sustainability principle. Uh, the effort to improve all the certification and standard is continue. I think we will finalize our Indonesia's sustainable palm oil uh, program under the very recent presidential regulation in 2020. Next, please. This is about the sustainable palm oil. Sustainability requirement for palm oil is very much part of the, the agreement. The concern with respect to palm oil production condition is addressed in Article 8.10 of the agreement on sustainable management of the vegetable oil sector. In order to ensure environmentally, economically, and socially sustainable, sustainable production of vegetable oils, Indonesia is committed to effectively implement laws to protect primary forest, peatland, and related ecosystem. I think it is, it is very clear on this. Next, please. Um, Mr. Ambassador, we are running out of time. Thank you very much. Could you please, let's say, go a bit faster to the last slides in order to okay. have really discussion afterwards. Sorry for that. I, I will jump to the collaboration between Indonesia Very and uh, Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland is, sorry, back. Sorry, this is. We, Jan is just coming on here. Yeah, yeah okay? this is the number. This is the number about the bilateral economic relation. It will keep improving. Uh, approach, uh, approaching more than 3.2 billion uh, export uh, together between Indonesia and Switzerland. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, this is about the importance of Switzerland for Indonesia. In Switzerland uh, is the third uh, investor from Europe after the Netherlands, United Kingdom, uh, and then Switzerland. And then also in terms of the number of projects, uh, I think Switzerland belong to the uh, top five after the Netherlands, United Kingdom, France, and Germany. Next, please. No, I mean the before this, please, the commodity. Next. Yeah, this one, I think, oh, sorry. This one is uh, basically indicating to all of you the commodity that we export and import from Switzerland uh, in 2019 and 2020. Next, please. The last one, last but not least. Uh, this is also the, our commitment to be more open for investors uh, from overseas in this as, uh, area. Uh, agriculture, forestry, marine, energy, industry sector, defense and security sector, public sector, public work sector, health sector, trade sector, tourism and creativity, transportation, communication, financial sector, banking, manpower, and education, everything open for investment coming from overseas. Well, with that, I think uh, I thank you, uh, Marcus, for the time that you provide, that you give me. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. So it was really an impressive uh, insight in the SIPA. Uh, really, really very impressive. So we, I go f far, fast on. So we have a first question from uh, Michele Vela. Um, he asks, what is the percentage of palm oil products uh, of the whole actual imported goods to Switzerland? Uh, Ms. Ambassador or Jesse, who could answer this question? Well, I I try to answer this question. Perhaps Jesse will have later. Uh, I think we have the number that import of Panuradi bisa tayangkan uh, Import uh, export of Indonesia palm oil this Indonesia palm oil in Switzerland. Actually, is this very small? You know, in 2019, just only 40 thousand ton of uh, palm oil exported to Switzerland. So uh, it is very small uh, because our palm oil goes to uni European Union and other part of the globe. But those who come to Switzerland is only a very, very small numbers. I think we are number seven or number eight uh, importers of uh, palm oil to Switzerland. Mostly come with the kernels and the oil, so it is it is very tiny. So it's is not only directly from Indonesia. But Jesse, do you want to add, please? We thank also you, have uh, Jan Atislanta uh, who is answered, but please, Jesse, very briefly. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think the number is correct, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador, and the Swiss mostly also import the palm oil from EU, from Netherlands. It's all pulled in that region into to that trader in Netherlands, that's all. Thank you. Uh, Jan Atteslanta, you uh, raise your hand, please. Yes, we import only 40 tons in 2019 on palm oil. So this is a really very small sum. It's not 40 thousand tons but 40 tons that's mainly two containers we import we imported in 2019 so it's really very small thank yeah. you very much very very small you're right yeah thank you um we got another question um from Ketola. will indonesia become a member of hague convention epistyle countries Say again, member of of Hague, Hague Convention, Apostle countries. Sorry, I'm really not familiar with. Yeah, does anybody have a or maybe a Kedola will uh, will uh, will unmute and ask his question personally? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes, yes please. please go. Right. Uh, question is. Um, related to the Hague Convention for upstyling documents. So this is a, um, uh, a uh, uh, upstyling documents that are that are needed for co concluding a uh, agreement with the um, companies, for example, we have a um, quick deal going on in the Indonesian companies or the, the buyer, the importer in Indonesia. Usually they are larger companies and then they have the uh, signed documents, but um, this has to be, according to the International Hague Convention, this has to be signed by the authorized people. And in order to uh, in order to verify that the, the the people authorized to sign the this sort of international documents, the the, the the convention, the Hague Convention is the is the one the, the standard, the high standard that confirm the authorized signature is correct. So basically, in Indonesia, there must be an apostille. Uh, agency or a place where the companies or the authorized people of the companies go and then get the verification stamp. This is an apostille, which is a stamp. 
that verify the authorized signatures and then done documents. The company documents issued by the Indonesian companies or the people authorized to sign on behalf of the companies. This is okay. correct. Or okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Can anybody answer? Uh, maybe Mr. Best or Chessy? Well, Are you familiar with? In, in our uh, practices, I think we comply with all the global standard as far as the trade and investment concern. Uh, I try to understand the Hague Convention that mentioned, uh, because in our case, we have what we call it the surveyor agency. The, this is agency to make sure that uh, checking not only on the, uh, the origination of the product, but also the, all the documentation of the product on behalf of the uh, related uh, uh, parties under the agreement. So it seems to me we have uh, uh, the, 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 the institution who handle this, it is the independent institution who check the documentation, who uh, checking depend on the, the origination and so on and so forth. So that's perhaps my, my understanding about the question. Perhaps Jesse or others yeah. will add uh, about this question. Okay, I'll, okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Also like to add, usually when people has to export we, yes, we have to fulfill this compliance and requirement. And I think one of the most active surveyor is SGS. SGS is a, also is a Swiss surveyor. So yeah, that's how the process works usually. Even if Coop buy something from Indonesian supplier, I think they use the service of SGS as well, a Swiss company. Thank you. Thank hey, you very much. Uh, uh, this question is answered. Yes, please. Yeah. So we have another question from. Is 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 okay? Okay, I'm sorry, thanks. I think we have a misunderstanding here. Uh, this is not about the um, the LC documentation or LC confirmation. This is about a um, apostille convention. And this is something has to be done at the level of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will. I will check and then back to you. I, uh, just keep you your email and then I will explain to you later in great detail. Very good. Okay, thank, thank, you, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have another question from Uzina. Um, Uzina Flitch about the dispute settlement process. In this agreement, uh, Usina is uh, referring to WIT, uh, WTO, Dispute Settlement Body, which is quite in a difficult status. Um, Usina, would you clear up your question or? Usina? Yes, of course, I can do that. Um, so, um, Mr. Ambassador, the agreement provides for dispute settlement through a court of arbitration or through the WTO dispute settlement body. But um, because the United States of America blocked the appointment of new um, people on the appellate body, there are no dispute settlement processes um, going on at the moment. So how is that going to affect the dispute settlement of the agreement? Well, there are two things. The first one is bilateral between Indonesia and Switzerland or EFTA and also the settlement under the WTO. Uh, under the WTO, is, I think it is uh, beyond our control. I hope the new president of United States will clarify all these things. So the WTO will have a new body, new apostle body who handle the a certain settlement later on. But then as far as the bilateral concern, I think this agreement will cover if uh, a certain procedure, if there is a dispute under, under, that's covered under this agreement. I mean, this is very much bilateral agreement between Indonesia and EFTA. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. So we, there's another question we already go over the time budget we had so i come to this last question and afterwards if any question is rising up please send us an email um 
and uh, we will connect you with uh, either Mr. Ambassador or uh, also with Jesse or Mr. Jan Atasandro. So now one question is from Alex Lodi. Please uh, unmute your mic. Alex? Yes, uh, I'm Alexander from uh, ATP uh, Zeta Way. We have a project uh, in 2019 about startups development between Switzerland and Indonesia. Uh, I think there's also a possibility for investing uh, startups because, uh, I mean, especially in Indonesia, they don't have a, a major startup to so the, uh, the, what do you call it, the uh, ability of a startups developer in Switzerland could help this uh, to, to accelerate them. So, uh, I, um, and especially also, uh, we have uh, tried to exercise if there is any possibility for the investor startups in Switzerland that can invest directly to Indonesia instead of having uh, a proxy, uh, uh, let's say, uh, office in Singapore or any any other places, so you can have a direct uh, control or a direct investment to uh, startups in Indonesia. Uh, I think that's uh, that's what I would, and, and and also these startups could uh, really help. The, the manufacturing facility 4.0, as you well know about this. And I, again, um, appreciate Mr. Mulyaman Haddad, who helped uh, ATP in uh, 2019, and we hope that we can uh, continue that project uh, after this pandemic uh, COVID-19. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, uh, event. Thank you so much. Who is going to answer this question? Mr. Ambassador? Yes, yes. Just. Uh, appreciation to Alexander. Thank you very much for the uh, stressing this topic, uh, startup and fintech uh, developed very fast in Indonesia. We have several unicorns from Indonesia. Uh, the regulators in Indonesia is also very committed, providing the hubs, you know, for the development of the startup. And we are very much open for investors, as mentioned by Alexander uh, from Switzerland. Uh, in particular, developing the startup uh, and also involving the startup, in particular startup that develop under the development of uh, supervision in Indonesia. Thank you, Alexander, for stressing this point. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Alex. So uh, I come to a very last question. Uh, this webinar is introduced by Weichenstellung für die Schweizer Außenwirtschaft. And this question goes to Dr. Jan Artislander. What can you say about this? Is the SIPA setting the course of Switzerland's international relation? Please, Jan. Yes, uh, thank you, Markus. It, we are at the crossroads. It's the first vote on the free trade agreement since 1972. So it's the first one uh, in our generation. And if we would say yes, it would open uh, many possibilities to conclude more free trade agreements of this type. And no would block our foreign economic policies because it would be far more difficult to conclude uh, similar free trade agreements with other partners in a similar size and dimension. And the other thing is why it is of strategic importance and why we are at a Weichenstellung. Um, Ambassador uh, uh, Mulyaman Haddad has already mentioned, and Jesse as well, Asia is integrating over the next 10 years its economy. They are abolishing trade barriers at a very high speed. And if a country like Switzerland, together with other EFTAs, would stay aside, that would be a terrible mistake because we would have a competitive disadvantage if we say no, if you would say no to this free trade agreement. So, yes, we are uh, at, the, at the crossroad and, and we have to, to pass it and, 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 and say it. And I just saw the, 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 first, the first polls. It is not yet decided. So we need more work to convince the Swiss population to say a clear yes uh, on this popular vote on March 7. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. This is a very, let's say, very clear and precise final statement. So uh, unfortunately, we have to come to an end. We have much more uh, participants as we expected.
For us, it's clear. We are convinced open markets and therefore free trade agreement are highly valuable answers in order to increase wealth for both parties. In this case, for Indonesia, for Switzerland, of course, Iceland, Norway, Liechtenstein. And on the other hand side, to decrease, decrease poverty. This is, let's say, the competitive advantage really earned in 2021, as uh, also Jan said. Um, I picked up a very important, uh, let's say, uh, answer from Mr. Ambassador, SIPA goes far beyond an FTA. And an astonishing, like the impressive uh, content it brings as one major achievement, sustainable development in the center of the discussion and action. So we don't talk only about FTA, SEPA goes far beyond. So therefore we bring Switzerland closer to the center of Southeast, Southeast Asia alone, uh, simply as we have heard, Indonesia, a market with 260 million consumers, which is 60% of the European community. Um, selected slides will be provided after the meeting. We got some question about this. Uh, Jan Ries from the uh, Chamber of Commerce at Gala Patel will send them to you. Uh, I would like to really thank you very much to the speakers and to all, to you all uh, joining us uh, from your home, from your office in this webinar, or uh, hopefully I pronounce it in a correct way, Derima Kazi. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Thank uh, you very so, much, Derima Kazi. Derima Kazi, okay. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, uh, Mr. You. Best. It was very nice to listen to you. Thank you, Jesse, and the Swiss Asian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Dr. Jan Atteslander from Economy Swiss. This webinar was a part of IAK Business Outlook event series under the title Dialogue. And we had a strong dialogue, even if it was a bit short. Uh, in the end, uh, more questions would have been arised. For more in information, uh, contact us uh, or come into our um, websites and events. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Have a Marcus? nice day. May I say a little bit? Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice Thanks day, everybody. Much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, we got a lot.